Today, I'm going to get a Totem of Undying. I'm going to get brand new items from a wandering trader, and I've updated it so that there are brand new mobs in the game. But to begin with, it's time for some villager transportation, which means digging a tunnel to move these guys. I think this update also brings in raw gold, so my Silk Touch pickaxe gets the iron ore, but with fortune or a normal pickaxe, look at that. Yeah, we're getting in the raw iron for other ones, it'll be raw gold. Pretty cool new feature. I got a bit carried away and dug the tunnel a little bit too far. But up here is a way to the surface and uh, just the place that I'm looking for. Hold on a second. A wandering trader. This is different to the other one because I killed the last one. You have nothing useful again? You really do disappoint me, stupid trader. I really need an oak sapling and some sugar cane. Now let's stick this guy in a boat, steal a bed, and take him to his new home. I've now reached the spot. Let's jump out the boat and break it. Place down a bed for you, good sir. Where are you going? I'm sorry, sir, but you live over that way now. Well, if you're not going to sleep in this bed... <laughs> I will. Now that you're well and truly trapped there, I'm going up to the surface. I always take these guys out with the hope of getting sugar, <laughs> and I never seem to get it. I'm going to grab a luck turn for that poor villager up there. And now I'm pretty sure that I'm ready to do a raid, and that it is actually going to work this time. We go like this, and fly up very, very high, and then slowly float our way down. And then I need to take out a pillager captain. And armed with this effect, if I head in this direction, I should come across the place that my villager is being kept, which is right here, but... <laughs> it's not triggered a raid because this stupid guy isn't accepting his bed. Maybe if I give him a lectern, that'll help him change his mind. It did. Okay, I didn't actually think that would work. All right, time to get serious, ladies and gentlemen. The raid needs blocks to spawn on at the surface and these grass blocks. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> it is finally working. This is definitely like no raid I've ever done before. It's almost like doing it on a super flat. Let's keep taking these guys out. I realize that I have a very bad bow, by the way. These guys will drop me emerald, which is very nice indeed. And he knows the way. <laughs> look at you trying to sneak down that hole. Don't you go down there. I can't afford to let anything happen to that villager. And there's the big boy Ravager. Thankfully, he doesn't really know just where to run. And he was very easy to take out. They all seem to know that the villager is kind of down that hole. But thankfully, they can't actually get through it. Excuse me, villager. You're not using that bed, so I might as well. And I've got to try and get out of here. Yeah, this is a little bit of a painful experience. All right, that, that somehow worked. I don't know how. And the raiders are ready and waiting. Tell you what, I couldn't get sugar before. But this is a great opportunity to. Surely one of these guys is going to drop some. Nope. You are the last one. My last chance. Come on. No sugar at all. But I came here for something much better than sugar. Oh, I actually got some from that <laughs> I took out a witch before and it actually dropped. The one time I'm not commentating over it. Yeah, we get it. Perfect. I've got to be a little bit careful here because we are low. Oh my goodness, I'm very low. Whoa. <laughs> I just realized I don't have a totem either, so I have to be a little bit more careful. They can get out of that hole. Look at him hitting with the spectral arrow. I like that a lot. Both of them are now on fire. I can hit them both. And this guy has dropped me what I want. The totem of undying. Finally, we got one. And hopefully we get the chance to get a few more now. I keep going straight for my villager. Totem number two. Just you left. I'd love to get a bit more sugar. Oh, we did this time. And now for the tough one. The double Ravager raid. I like to just go in on the sword on the Ravager sometimes. It does pack a bit more of a punch. There we go. He's taken out. You've lost everything. I'll chuck this crossbow away. Get a totem. Very nice indeed. Let's get rid of all of you now. I'm not sure if there's another wave after these guys, but that's another two totems. Let's get rid of you. And we did it. We got hero of the village. Just need to get rid of these stupid vexes. Whoa, this guy's got a fire aspect thing and I can't put myself out. Oh my goodness. Gotta be careful, eh? Vexes are one of the hardest mobs in the game. But now this guy should be giving me some free gifts. Take your time, mate. I'll, I'll be waiting. He threw me a book. Was that really worth waiting for? You know what, mate? You keep that. You're a librarian. You need it more than me. Let's get rid of this skeleton. And now that I have totems, hardcore is going to become a lot less stressful. Also, guys, we're getting closer and closer to 2 million subscribers. So if you're new and enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Hi, fellas. You won't know this, but I... I saved the village. Yeah, your friend that, that I took away from you, he's, he's now in a brand new village, living by himself. A spare totem can go in the ender chest, and the rest of this loot can nicely go in here. I've never smelted raw iron before, but I think it works like normal. Yep, as you can see, it just gives you iron ingots. I've got good news, guys. More emeralds and more stone. After that, I've decided that my bow is useless and I need to upgrade it. In fact, I'm just going to craft an entirely new one. Oh man, all the villagers are throwing me stuff because I still have Hero of the Village and it works in other villages. That's it. Give me all the free loot. I really don't need half of this stuff, but give it to me anyway. This cartographer gave me paper. You know, that's really nice. But I think my biggest problem is a real lack of villagers. So I'm going to place down more beds and then I will give them more bread. And look at the discounts I'm getting on the stone. This really is free money. And now I have two pieces of paper. You know, if I got together enough cartographers and then obtained Hero of the Village, all my paper problems could be solved. I also think clay is a new block that I haven't been able to get before. By the way, this chest will now be known as the Hero of the Village chest. And isn't that great? Looks like we've got some more babies on the way. And then I will use them to get the 
perfect bow. Good to see the iron farm still bringing in great returns. I'm at a point where I have three and a half stacks of iron blocks. I probably need to get a treasure shulker box. I guess this shulker box is kind of empty. I'm going to grab some orange dye, make it an orange shulker box, and start adding all my treasures into it. Next, I'm going to head to the nether, and there I plan to hunt for ghasts. And when you've got a light show, that's extremely easy. This will be my last target. I feel like I'm not going to get the loot. Uh, we didn't. But three gas tiers is enough for me. And if I grab myself some blaze rods, some ender pearls, make eyes of ender, that lets me craft four end crystals. Thankfully, I had a couple of spare gas tiers in that chest. Now my plan is to head back to the surface and then track down a new stronghold. According to my calculations, the stronghold is pretty much right here. So I just need to find a way to get below the bedrock on this grass path. This looks like it'll work. If I just like fly down with my elytra, yeah, we can fit down that gap perfect. And now I've just got to dig down a long, long way. Look at that. Straight in. And straight to the portal room too. You can't get much better than that. Although I'm one eye of ender short, so maybe you can get better than that. I take it back. The bookcase room is only over there, and that's what I'm mainly looking for. Now give me all the paper. Already 19 pieces makes this very worthwhile. If nothing else, I've been finding a lot of apples in this stronghold. Very good news. In this chest, I have found an ender pearl, which means I can make a final eye of ender. And I found another one here as well. <laughs> One to spare. And finally, the place I'm looking for, the bookcase room, which has those all-important pieces of paper. And from this stronghold, 49 pieces, which is pretty insane. Now I have to somehow find my way back to the portal, which should be pretty easy. I found this bookcase room. I, all I know is it's somewhere up there. I'm going to risk it and just fly up because I can't bother to build. Alrighty, let's head through. And to the end we go. And this is where I would like to rebirth the Ender Dragon. Does it annoy you guys that I accidentally didn't do that one in the centre, but all the other ones are? Because I really hope it does. And now it's time to destroy these towers. I've just realised I've been standing on the ground like a peasant when I can literally fly and shoot them that way, which is just ten times better. I can even come over here and get it from a distance. Very nice. This is the only tower remaining. Can I do that? Oh, I can do that. Let's get this dragon. And I can also pick up the dragon's breath. Although I, I got very weak there. I better be careful. Probably safer to collect dragon's breath from down here. Right, I think we've got enough. Let's start taking him out. And now this power three bow can be put to good use. Let's grab myself some more dragon's breath. Now we have got 15 bottles. We can sneak right here and get a little bit more health off him. Oh my goodness, what's going on? I just used a totem. Wait, did he? He's like he, he, he flew into me. And, and killed me nearly. All right, well, we're still alive. I've got plenty more totems as well, thankfully. I wasn't going to blow him up with the bed, but now I think it's just time to get the job done. So I'm going to stay crouched. Very careful. There we go. <laughs> job done. Isn't it sad that you get barely XP compared to the other fight? Well, the main thing about this is a new gateway. Has Do you have to walk? You know what? I'm leaving. And because I used a bed in the stronghold and then broke it, I've got to make my way home. But as I was saying, a new end gateway has opened, which is an opportunity to get new end cities, which is great because I feel like I'm starting to run low on shulker boxes. What I will do here is drop off all the precious goods, grab more gunpowder so that I can make more firework rockets. And since we do have new villagers, I was hoping to get a power five bow, but <laughs> they seem to have already all taken job site blocks. So I'm going to do things the old fashioned way with an enchantment table. I'm breaking and power four. Very nice indeed. This one's also power four. You know what? This is a very nice bow as well. This anvil can go there and we can start putting these bows together. I've gone through a lot of levels, but I finally got flame, which means this bow is almost maxed other than punch one. I've come this far, I might as well max it out. I have used so many levels to do that, but totally worth it. And I didn't need any of you guys at all. I've also realized a great way to get rabbits hide, and that is by using cats. You see, no rabbits seem to spawn anywhere in this world, but every morning cats will bring you a gift, and it's possible for that gift to be a rabbit's hide. And with six of them, you can get bundles, which are very, very useful. But for now, little kitty cat, you're going to be called Scrub. It was an idea in the comments, and I just thought it was funny. The sun is now going down. Let's go to sleep and see if we get a gift from my cat. I'm going to unsit you. Go and make me proud. Don't just sit on the bed like that. Let's see. What did you give me? You gave me some chicken. All right. Thanks, Scrub. I guess there's a reason your name is Scrub. I'm sorry, that wasn't very nice of me. I'm going to put this in the oven. That'll be lovely for tea. Be like, for the sake of my sanity, I need to get more cats. Otherwise, it's going to take me forever to get a bundle. And now we're off to an end city to get more shulker shells. End city number one has been spotted. Let's first grab the dragon head. And then I'd like to shoot the shulker, but I've just realized I completely forgot to bring any arrows. Just a very small oversight to my plan. Looks like we're taking him out with the sword today. There's not really any loot here that particularly interests me. It's mainly all about the shulker shells. And we can get quite a lot of them quite fast. I don't know why there's loads of shulkers in really weird places that they never normally spawn. They're on the sides of buildings and everything. It could even be a change in 1.17 because there's never normally this many. The best thing about the end cities is I always get free ender chests. Like three shulkers down here is just unheard of. In fact, there's more. Look, there's some over there. Where are they all coming from? I mean, I'm not complaining. I need shulker shells. Already I've got 18. I probably don't need that many more. There's only so many things that you can store in a shulker box. I reckon these beetroot seeds should be taken because they're kind of a rare item. I'm at a stage where mending gear, not interesting, but ender chests, 
Brilliant. Let's get rid of you. Perfect. And finally, I'm going to get rid of this guy. And now I have 22 shulker shells. I'm getting out of it. And here we have an end gateway. I can gracefully float into there and collect more XP at my Enderman farm. It's nice to at least be back at 50 levels. Next on my agenda, I'd like to find some axolotls. Found diamonds, but <laughs> still no axolotl. Here we go. There's quite a few over here. Let's grab this yellow guy. So if I... Yeah, look at that. We've got a bucket of axolotl. Oh, and they're killing the glow squids. Wait, is that... Is that what I think it is? Glow ink sack. And <laughs> I didn't even have to kill him for it. Yeah, look at this. The glow squid. Yeah, I'm definitely so happy that the community voted for this. <laughs> well, it started as a meme. It's kind of worked out well. I don't think they have much use other than the fact that if you kill them, you get that glow ink sack. And then if I make a sign, let's put it right here. SB's house. And if I get the glow ink sack, why, why is it not glowing? That, I thought it was meant to make it glow. Take two with an oak sign. I mean, maybe it's glowing, but maybe you just can't tell because it's light at the moment. If this item frame doesn't properly glow, I'm not going to be happy. Out with the old one and in with the new. I mean, it it, it doesn't look like it's glowing. I guess that's because it's light, but the color's different. I quite like that. Let's make another glowing item frame and change this to instead be like that. Perfect. It is also quite nice to be able to grow some beetroot. I also feel like I've got way too many wheat seeds and that a load of them can just be chucked away. Something I definitely want to do in my house now is build an axolotl tank. I think it'd be quite nice to have the floor as all amethyst blocks. Also, it's dark, which means I can get another present from my cat. Although, once again, chicken. Look, I appreciate the chicken, but at the same time, I don't want chicken. Maybe we could try and use this calcite for the build as well. I feel like calcite will be boring. I'm going to try and find something better. I reckon some nice coloured wool could be the way to go. Some nice orange wool along the sides. These beams can be dark blue wool and the roof light blue. Once again, these sheep have eaten all the grass down it. Something's got to be done. I need to head to the nether and start collecting more wood. This may seem like a stupid idea, but what happens if you put an axolotl in the nether? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That's like instant murder. Another night's sleep and you are an amazing cat scrub. I'm sorry of all the horrible things. You know what? This chicken, I will, uh, I will eat it in honor of you, but we got our first rabbit hide. No, that, that doesn't mean you get to come with me for the day, though. You, you still stay in there. Now I'm going to craft a load of fences. And when I say a load, I mean <laughs> definitely a load. We should also get a bunch of gates. That should be perfect. What on earth are you doing? You can't just come around here with your fancy invisibility potion. That's, well, that worked, didn't it? The next plan is to flatten out a massive area. This should be a big enough area, so let's get placing fences. And this, to me, is definitely going to be big enough. Now comes the fun part of trying to successfully get all these sheep to come into here. <laughs> you know what? It's it's actually very easy. We do have a problem though that there is a cow in the sheep pen, but it'll just have to stay here. Now let's put this pig on a lead. And I can also do the same with the cow. Get out of the way, cow. Pigs first, then you second. So this is the non-sheep side, and this is the sheep side. And now I can finally get rid of this dirt monstrosity. And now I have no idea what I did with my axe. Never mind, guys. I'm stupid. It's it's in the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like looking for your glasses and they're actually on your head. It was definitely not me just being incredibly stupid. We need another few pieces of light blue wool and this will be done. Might as well buy some glass as well while I can. I also quite like the idea of adding some hanging bells. The place is really starting to come together. And with that, I can now complete the roof. And let's now start putting glass along here. I've also got to be really careful that I don't flood the entire downstairs. And now I'm going to start adding the water. And now this is all filled in, I want to go and get a few more axolotls. I have five buckets in total, so let's get five of them. Let's grab these down here. Yeah, they've all sorts of random colors, aren't they? I do think it's great that you can put them in a bucket. Five axolotls. Let's get them in the tank. Okay, whoa, that's a big boy. <laughs> there's a couple of small ones and then there's like three giant ones. They seem a bit out. Don't die. No, 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 no. Get back in the... Bu no, no, no. What are you doing, you... Crazy. Crazy. I think it's best that I make a few adjustments to the roof, which means I have to shear even more sheep. And now the axolotl tank is finished with the improvements. <laughs> I did breathing holes at the top so they wouldn't suffocate. Although it, it could do with like seagrass or something. I can definitely come down here and grab a bit of kelp, which will look good. So if I bone meal this, oh, look at it. It actually worked. I didn't think that would happen. So a bit of bone meal over there. I can't get this cool stuff like coral unless the wandering trader sells it to me. But seagrass and a bit of kelp is the best that I can do. And my axolotl tank is now officially finished. I don't know if they'll despawn, but I really hope not. And here we have another cat. If I can go and get some fish, then I can use it to get closer to getting rabbit's hide. Let's see, one fish, one chance. Come on, oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't think one fish would actually tempt me. You are a special cat. And for that, your name shall be One Fish Wonder, because you were quite literally a one fish wonder. You can now join Scrub in living in my bedroom. Yeah, I really like that, but I, I think to make it proper, there definitely needs to be a fish tank there at some point as well. I just realized I did get coral. Should we? Yeah, let's use it. Why not? I'll place a piece in this corner. Can you bone me? Okay, no, you can't really bone me up to get anything extra, but we don't want to use too many pieces because this is rare stuff, but I don't know. Let's let's use four pieces in total. The tank is definitely coming to life. I'm not sure. Maybe I've got too much coral in there. I might reduce it. But now the sun is going down so I can get some sleep and see if my cats give me more rabbit hide. Let's see what we got. We got a feather. 
Did, did you give me anything, one fish wonder? Because if you didn't, that's that's very disappointing. Maybe they need to come and sleep on the bed with you to get it. Maybe I'll, I don't know. All I know is that Scrub is my most reliable cat. I realize that this boat is also completely useless, so goodbye, Bo. You will be despawning. And if I want to build another axolotl tank later, I'm going to need more wool. And let's also move this chest. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize there was that much in it. As I was saying, let's move this chest down here. We should probably make it into a double chest. Perfect. Now let's start adding stuff in. And this night is just gone. One cat gave me rotten flesh. Well, nobody wants that. You sit down. But I got another rabbit hide. So let's put that in there. We're, we're slowly building up a collection. And I feel like it is now time to get another wandering trader. Because I really want to make progress. But I feel like in order to do that, I'm going to need either sugarcane or oak saplings. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 days of waiting, we have got this fella right here. He's the second one that I've got. I did get another one earlier, but I... <laughs> I did something to get rid of him. But very thankfully, this guy is offering sand and sugarcane. Two items I cannot get. So I'm going to delve into my ender chest. I've got a shulker box right here with lots of emerald blocks. All the emeralds that I am possibly going to need are right here. I'm telling you, sir, it is a good day for you. Look at a stack of sand. That's brilliant. How much sugarcane can we get? 12, that is good enough for me. Might as well buy the coral, the puffer fish. I mean, I don't really need purple dye or glowstone. I can just make those. So pleasure doing business with you, sir. And now he's going to wander off <laughs> into the sunset. And thanks to finding that, it actually lets me do two very useful things. The obvious first thing is that I can now grow sugarcane. But if I take out a few creepers, and thankfully there's loads of them around here, I can also use my sand to craft TNT. You'll have to wait and see what I want to use that for. And now I have infinite paper. I can fly around without worrying too much. Because before, fireworks were a very precious thing. I'm kind of tired of hunting down creepers now, but I have got 48 gunpowder. If I could make a gunpowder farm this episode, it would be amazing. And now that I have unlimited sugar, <laughs> some of you guys are going to be getting infected. We seem to have a bit of an egg overload here. I'm going to take this spare paper, create more firework rockets, do a little bit of brewing, and then I can head to the nether. And then I can head to this nether fortress, drink some fire resistance, and start collecting wither skulls. And that's the first wither skull. It's super weird how if you anger pigmen, it spawns zombies in the nether. <laughs> I think it's a bug, but <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Oh, we got another skull. Nice. Another one. Okay, that's the final wither skull. And now it's time to head back home. Now this is where all those shulker shells are going to come in handy. Which will also pops the nether to get more wood. Nether deforestation really is a major problem. And then I can make some chests, turn them into shulker boxes, make them into white ones because I feel like it, and then load them up with eggs. And now these are all completely full of eggs. And then I need to get some potions of poison. And then we're going to head to the end, place down the four soul sand and only two of the wither skulls for now. And then I want to corner off a bit of this area and get busy throwing eggs. Honestly, this is going to take a lot longer than I anticipated. Why do I find it funny to throw eggs at other chickens to make them run around? I'm probably just slightly evil. Look at this, I can open the shulker boxes and all the chickens get thrown into the... <laughs> it's the little things in life. Tell you what, by the time I'm done, all these chickens are going to be grown up. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely out of hand. How am I supposed to get to the rest of these eggs with you guys all over the place? And finally, I have thrown every single egg. That was 1,700 of them. Oh no, I accidentally made a hole and they're all filtering out. No, I need to... Get back here, you guys. <laughs> oh no, they're all getting out here as well. Chickens, stop. I'm, I'm, I'm having a chicken disaster. Get back down here right now. I guess that's just a classic example of survival of the fittest. Now I'm going to place that with a skull in there. Get in the corner, you know. Don't, don't worry, guys. This is, this is going to be all right. Well, all right for me anyway. As soon as this guy blows up, we get loads of wither roses. And it's a very easy wither kill as well. There we go. Get the nether star. You can live down here, little fella. Oh my goodness, loads of them got taken out up here as well. Two and a half stacks of wither roses is not bad. A few chickens now live in the end. They could be called ender chickens. But I have to say, that's all's well that ends well. But it didn't end well for all the chickens. The sugar cane is steadily growing away. Let's plant more of this around the edge. And I hereby call this the sugar cane chest. Now let's do some sheep snipping. And now I can begin work on the other water tank. And that is the floor finished. And that is the walls done. And finally, the roof as well. So next, I'm going to add in all this glass and start getting the water down. Now I'm going to grab more coral, some bone meal, and also these puffer fish. There's no point having two axolotl tanks, and these axolotls will kill anything that's in the tank with them. So I might as well take the opportunity to make this one a fish tank. And so far, I've only been able to get puffer fish from the wandering trader. And there's not really any other way to get fish than that. I'm going to have to be quick for this next bit. I do not want... Oh no, I messed it up already. I was going to say, I don't want to get poisoned by these guys, but I think it's just an inevitability. I'll just, I'll just take it. All right. Cool little puffer fish. Hopefully they don't swim out. Let's block up this hole. And there you have it. A little puffer fish tank. Somehow I feel like the oxalotas look a lot cooler. So this little bit of sugarcane farming here is, is good and all. But we need to make something much more efficient. But to do that, we're going to need a lot of pistons. I've only got one. I've only got 21 redstone. We're going to need to mine for more. Thankfully, like everything, redstone is extremely easy to find. You just go for a swim and you're sorted. Might as well grab a few diamonds while I'm down here too. I've now got four and a half stacks. That should be enough. We're also going to need cobblestone, which isn't that hard to get. And you know me, I've already got loads and loads of items. 
iron and plenty of wood. And with that, I'm going to make a load of pistons. You know what? That should be a good amount. Actually, I want more, which means collecting more cobblestone. And now I have 64 pistons. That should be enough. Although I do still need more cobblestone and I can craft 64 observers. Good job I've still got loads of spare redstone. Let's also craft a load of rails. And I've got hoppers and chests. I think I'm ready to build this. Actually, hold on. <laughs> Better not forget the sugar cane. That's kind of a crucial part of the plan. The smartest place for me to build this is going to be by the iron golem farm because then it'll be in the spawn chunks so it will always be working even if I'm not nearby. Managed to chisel out this whole area. It's not quite working as intended just yet since creepers are spawning. I'm placing a torch underneath the powered rails and with them being down here it won't conflict with any of the other redstone. And now the rails on both sides are complete. Let's add dirt in over the top. There's going to be hoppers along here and these will pick up sugar cane as they go past. The chest system is now complete. I just want to get some glass to finish it off. And if I want more glass, I'm going to have to buy it from this fella. I also need a bit of extra dirt as well. And the plan is for the glass to go all the way along here and then over this chest system as well. And next I'm going to add loads of water all the way along. It doesn't even need to all be water source blocks. I can just do something like this. And the redstone part of this is pretty basic. We're just going to have redstone all the way along this edge here. And then we're going to place observers along this way so that they're all facing into where the sugar cane will be. And I need to make sure that there are blocks behind all these observers. And finally, I can add in the pistons. And the reason that I need the blocks behind the observers is that now, when I place this, when a sugar cane grows, and it grows to that height, the only ex piston that extends is the one that needs to. As you can see, in my other 100 days world, every single piston would extend. And that is a lot less efficient just because of the way that sugarcane growth works. Now I'm going to add some hopper minecarts and they are going backwards and forwards. Also, my sister refuses to move off camera, so she's she just sat there in the background. And she's got a message for you all. I am not going subscribe. I'm also going to collect a load of glowstone. And finally, I'm going to add glowstone behind the sugarcane. I'm going to add ladders here so I can get in and out. And this right here is a complete design flaw. So I'm going to need to head back home, realize I've not got enough redstone. So mine some more up right here. Craft two redstone blocks and instead place those at the end of the line. And now this hopper is working as it should. For some reason, I have to move the redstone block from here and instead place it right there. And with all the sugarcane I have now planted, all that's left to do is place glass in the way. And now this is going to be constantly working away in the background. So whilst I leave that to get me loads of sugarcane, I'm going to try and get another wandering trader. Although this guy's still here. It must have been an unloaded chunks of... Sorry, mate, but you've got to go. I need a new one for sure. Let's box myself in and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll wait till one appears. Three hours later. Guys, I have had to wait a long time for this, but we got another wandering trader and this guy, he's the real deal, okay? Rooted dirt, I don't know what that was, and a birch sapling. That is exactly what we need. Either a birch sapling or an oak sapling would have done it. And thankfully, this guy has pulled through. So we've got eight of those saplings. We might as well buy the slime balls. They're going to be kind of useful. Tropical fish, I'm going to buy that. Rooted dirt, I didn't even know that was in the game. You know what? White tulips as well. I don't need yellow dye because we've got loads of stuff. And now, <laughs> I don't like doing this bit, but I have no choice. Definitely didn't just murder somebody. And I'm very excited to see how the sugarcane farm is doing. None. Why not? The only thing I can think of is that this is in the spawn chunks, but maybe this is just out of it. I am so stupid sometimes. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll come back to this when we have to AFK here. My puffer fish is still alive and well, so let's add some tropical fish as well to this tank now. Hopefully the puffer fish don't hurt them in any way. Looks to me like they're all living together in harmony. Let's add all these white tulips along here. And apparently if you bone meal rooted dirt like this, look at that, it, it grows roots below it. <laughs> Don't know, yeah, it's kind of a cool use, I suppose. It really gives the place that underground feel, doesn't it? Let's grab loads more bones. And I'm going to do this next bit above the sugarcane farm so it can at least be growing in the background. So if we bone mill these trees, eventually there is a chance of getting a bee's nest. Although I think it needs flowers around it for it to work. Couldn't really be more flowers around you, could there? <laughs> well, we didn't get one there. Could keep picking up flowers like a peasant, but I've had a way better idea. I can use the poppies from the iron farm. Also, the sugarcane is now growing. If that's not enough flowers to get a bee's nest, I don't know what is. I'll have to try another four trees. <laughs> Mission unsuccessful. Apparently, it only needs to be close to one flower, so <laughs> I didn't really need all those. And well, look at that. It worked. My first ever bees. Look at you. Have some flowers. That's it. You know, nothing's too much trouble. Another one? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is great and I can breed them as well. Yes, there you go. And we've got a baby bee. It's beginning guys, it's starting. There's a 1 in 20 chance for it to have a beehive, so I'm going to try and get another one. Oh dude, we got another one. There we go, perfect. I never thought I'd get excited over growing trees in Minecraft. So I can breed these bees as well. And I need to collect up the saplings since they're in quite short supply. It looks as though the first batch of honey is ready. And if I go ahead and grab some coal and then craft a few campfires, they can go underneath and I just need to get some glass bottles. Let's grab that glass, craft some glass bottles. I was about to say harvest the honey, but... Uh, Apparently, I can't uh, place a campfire underneath very well. And now we can harvest the honey. You're not going to get angry. Be our guest. Very good stuff. If we eat this, that is uh, 
for the first time, me eating honey. And we can also breed some more bees. I have no idea if there's actually any bees inside here, but if I pick it up with Silk Touch, it will tell me. Apparently it's empty. I don't know where those bees wandered off to, but that bee's looking for a new home. Let's put it right there. Where's it going? It's actually flying away. If you ask me, this is just a great bee rescue. That's your home up there, okay? Go and, go and live over there. What on earth? Wait, did you shoot the bee and he stung you and now that bee's gonna die? Oh my goodness, I rescue you and these are your dying moments. This is a very, very sad day. You stupid skeletons. And there he goes. What a sad, sad moment. You know what? Have a, have a flower in your honor. Now let's see if things have picked up at the sugarcane farm. Most of them have grown to be too high and it's working. Sugarcane is filtering through. Turn that into paper and then that into firework rockets. Now in order to take things to the next level, we're going to need to build a honey farm, which means collecting more redstone. I'm actually finding it easier to find diamonds than redstone. And when you see diamonds, you've just got to grab them. Now I can craft a load of comparators, some dispensers, and I'll bring some spare redstone just in case I need it further down the line. Right here is spawn. I can't believe I didn't build the sugarcane in spawn chunks because it's still very, very close. I'm guessing I was only just out of range, but this time I definitely won't be. So the plan is to have the beehive here and then the dispenser above it. And when the beehive fills up, the dispenser will extract the honey. There is probably an easier way using observer blocks, but I think this way will work too. So the redstone is pretty simple. The comparator comes out of there and then we're just going to stick a repeater on top of here and that will activate the dispenser when this is full. The dispenser is full of bottles. So if we go like that and then we put another one through and we have a honey bottle. But in order to make it work properly, it needs to be filled with normal bottles so that when it creates a honey bottle, the honey bottle will come down into a hopper here. I don't know if it sounds complicated, but it shouldn't be too hard. And in order to make more beehives, I'm going to need honeycomb. And now all the redstone is complete for eight of these, so I need to get more bees nests, which means using my bone meal and getting on with it. I should probably get around to adding some hoppers. As you can see, the first of my honey bottles has come from this automatic system. And thankfully I have lots of iron, so hoppers are very easy to make. So the hoppers are gonna be brought along here and nicely fill up this chest. And in these gaps in between, I want to add birch wood. And we'll have hoppers going into each dispenser. Oh, this poor little fella doesn't have a home, I don't think there's not enough space for him. Don't you worry, little fella, we'll get you a nice new home. Right about there, that, that's where you live. Okay, he didn't go in there. I think he ended up going in the beehive anyway. Just got an advancement, total bee location. Oh, we got a honey bottle as well. Very nice indeed. I think it'd be better if we have it every other one. They like alternate the types of beehives. And now it's back to trying to get bees nests. And this honey farm is pretty much done now. I just want to add some glass panes along here. All I need to do now is buy loads of glass so I can get more glass bottles. And with all that, I can craft three stacks of glass bottles, but I, I want more. I'm also pleased to say that the sugarcane is now growing nicely, so I might as well get more of it planted. I've also dug a tunnel from here that goes all the way up to the honey farm. Just need to craft some ladders and add them to the bottom. These dispensers are now all very well stocked with bottles. And as you can see, we've got plenty of honeycomb and honey bottles. If I craft these all into honey blocks, then that is eight already. I do need a few more still, which will allow me to do my next project. So I'm going to leave that to keep running in the background. Hopefully because it's near spawn, it will do. And this honeycomb is going to be very useful. Because this house has been here for a long time, the copper has gone to this turquoisey greeny colour. If I use my axe on them, look at that. We can revert them to as good as new, which I just found out now was possible on the wiki. And now if I put honeycomb on it, it will no longer fade. And that is one of the main reasons why I wanted bees. It just looks brand new again. And I'll show you the other reason why I wanted bees a little bit later. And you'll also find out why I wanted all those wither roses. But first of all, I think it's time I added something else to my house. And that is a room for my enchantment table, which means I'm gonna have to mine up all these bookcases with my silk touch. And there we go, the new enchantment room. Okay, I should probably make it look at least a little bit better. And now this room is completely finished. I think it looks all right. And now I'm going to spend more time collecting up XP. And I've now reached 125 levels. Let's get out of here. And now I can start gathering materials for my next project. And as part of the build, I'm going to need loads more redstone. And thankfully there is loads over here. And I'm aiming to get 25 redstone blocks worth. I have to say the waters look so much nicer with these glow squid. I feel like all this redstone should be enough. And from that, we actually got a stack of redstone blocks. I do need 36 honey blocks. Let's see how many we've got. We're currently up to 17. It's working quite well, to be honest. And I can always breed more bees. And now I'm on a mission to collect more gold. I've also just realized that I can now use my fortune pickaxe to get even more gold. I think it pretty much just doubled the amount that I would have got. And thanks to that, I can craft some powered rails. And my precious slime balls are going to be used for sticky pistons. I've also just realized that I need over 37 stacks of magma for this farm. So I'd better get busy with mining. And that is the first shulker box completely filled. I just need about another six stacks. And I now have more than enough magma. I still need another 11 honey blocks. But I'm going to get started on the build and then come back for the rest. I'm going to start by heading up above the nether, then I'm going to grab an ender pearl and then throw it right about there and then come up above the nether. And now that we have TNT, we can break this block. This might take a few attempts, but let's go like that and then spam on placing place the piston. Okay, didn't work first time. Here we go for take two. <laughs> Still didn't work. And that time I did it. Okay, <laughs> there we go. 
I uh, <laughs> wasn't sure if I managed it, but all right. I broke the wrong piece of bedrock. I actually got the right block, but it turns out it was too deep, so I'm gonna have to try and like break that one as well. This is gonna use a lot more TNT than I was intending. I've managed to break these three pieces. The last one is right here. Let's just go like this and let's see if it actually works. Oh, I think it did, you know. Would you look at that? So now I can go down one and break this piece. I went from breaking zero bedrock to breaking about five pieces of bedrock. And this piece has also now been broken. All right, now we can get up and, up and down from the nether. And my next goal is to find a nearby soul sand valley. In fact, there is a very nearby soul sand valley. And here we are in that valley above the nether. And if you didn't realize, we're gonna be building a ghast farm. I'll leave a tutorial link down in the description. And right here is where we're gonna make a nice little hopper collection system. And now I need to place down a lot of of rails. And now that I've reached the end, if I go and break this rail, place another one there, that's how it's going to look. And my hopper minecart should go around there, absolutely no problem. Now I'm going to add slabs all the way along here. Now I've created a nice border around this entire area. Let's go up four blocks here and place slabs above these magma blocks. And this is just going to be a roof so the gas can't fly away. My bees are still working very hard. We're now up to 30 honey blocks. Six more to go. And now the roof is completely finished. And now it is time to build the flying machine. So on the side of this slab, I'm going to place nine honey blocks. And the reason honey blocks are better is because skeletons can't spawn on them, but they can spawn on slime. And due to me bees not working hard enough, I still need six more honey blocks, so let's try and get them. Come on, you lazy creatures, get on with it. I feel like we have more bees than we have space in beehives, so I'm going to make a couple more. And then the bees can just live in there. Look at that, it's working, they're all going in. Might as well breed even more. We can now get a couple more blocks. I'm just going to keep coming back every morning until I have the rest of the blocks I need. So for now, it's back to building. Since another day is beginning, I'm here to check on my bees and up to eight bottles. Looks like it's kind of working. We've, uh, we've already got a gas that spawned. Oh my goodness. I, actually, that's kind of a good thing that you stopped that because the other one's just flying away. Stop, please. Thank you. Yeah, I shouldn't have flicked that leaf <laughs> until I built the other side. Now I can add my wither roses along here. And before I rebuild my flying machines, I'm going to collect the last bits of honey that I need. I'm still one block short, but we'll be able to get that very easily. And now take two on the flying machines is nearly complete. Might as well get an achievement while I'm at it as well. A sticky situation. And with these observers, this bit is now complete. And for the final step, I'm going to drink some fire resistance, grab a load of magma and get placing. I've just realized that the fire resistance is completely useless. You know, sites like that just scare me. <laughs> a gas just chilling over there. And now this platform is completely finished. That's a lot of magma. I don't want that guy to see me. Now I want to head back home and get that final honey block. And look at that. The honey bottles are ready and waiting for me. Let's craft it. <laughs> this honey farm is now completely obsolete. All your work, guys. You're free to do what you want. Let's place that right there. Set off the hopper minecart going around. And now I need to build up 125 blocks. Hopefully without this gas shooting me. We're all right. And now that we're at the correct height, we're going to build 25 blocks along. This is my AFK platform. Now we just need to set off the flying machines. Oh my goodness. Goodness, the gas have been shooting me in already. They've, they've broken some of my magma. No, are you kidding me? This is going to be a nightmare. Right, it's a better plan. We're going to fly away and then fly back and hope that they just all despawn. There's just one gas up here, but I can get rid of you. Hopefully no more spawning <laughs> just while I get everything working. Let's start the flying machines. They're going to keep moving. They did destroy my only piece of soul sand, but I think for now, a wither rose on netherrack will hopefully work. I'm sure I've got enough time to quickly mine up some more. Oh no. Oh dear, oh dear. Why, why are the flying machines not moving again? Let's carefully break that, grab what we can, place the wither rose on top, drop down, he didn't see me. And if I repair this, everything should be sorted. I have now created a completely safe way to get up to the lever, set it off, only one of them is actually gone. What if I go like, oh, did, did, did that one just get, oh, something's broken, oh no. I've made all of the repairs, and I think if I place some obsidian there, yeah, it should set off. And now the machines have stopped because I flicked this lever. If I set it off, they should all be going and it should pick up the gas. Okay, it looks like it's happening. And now the Wither Roses are taking out the gas. It's actually working. It sounds absolutely awful, but it is picking up gunpowder and gas tears. And now I can fly to my AFK area and get loads of gunpowder and gas tears. It's now been about three minutes. I'm just going to fly down here. Hopefully I don't get spotted by the gas. And as you can see, it's giving me a decent amount of gunpowder. It's not a crazy fast one, as fast as a creeper farm. But in this world, it's the best gunpowder farm that I can do. And when I use it with my sugarcane farm, I can get lots and lots of firework rockets. It's quite a unlikely that I will do a 400 days because I feel like I've kind of run out of things to do in this world. It's brought some great challenges and I've really enjoyed working out how to get past them. But I'd just be repeating my other series if I kept it going. But if you really wanted to stay, 250,000 likes on this video and I'll think about it. But day 300 is over. Thanks so much for watching. That was 300 days in a cave-only world in hardcore Minecraft.